Dear learners, a very warm welcome to all of you. In the first part of the chapter on how do organisms reproduce, we discussed the need for reproduction by organisms and discussed asexual reproduction in detail. In this session, we will discuss sexual reproduction in detail. In the previous session, we find out the different modes of reproduction by single organisms that is known as asexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, two individuals are required to produce offspring. Sexual reproduction is a natural way of reproduction and takes place in all multicellular organisms. In this, the male and the female gamete fuse together and give rise to a new cell that is known as reproduction. In multicellular organisms like monkeys alone cannot produce monkeys. A bull cannot produce a new calf nor can hen can alone produce a new chick. In such cases both sexes that is the male and the female are needed to produce new generations with the utilization of a lot of efforts and energy. As compared to asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction is dependent on two organisms along with lot of efforts and energy. Then why the sexual mode of reproduction? As we have discussed in previous session, asexual reproduction involves the copying of DNA as well as the cellular apparatus and the cell divided into two. The DNA copying mechanism as we have noted cannot be absolutely accurate and the resultant errors are a source of variations in populations of organisms. Every individual organism cannot be protected by variations. But in a population, variations are useful for ensuring the survival of the species. The species easily adapt the changes in habitat. It would therefore make sense if organisms came up with reproductive modes that allowed more and more variations to be generated and sexual mode of reproduction provides faster variations means more chance of survival. While DNA copying mechanism are not absolutely accurate, they are precise enough to make the generations of variation a fairly slow process. If the DNA copying mechanism were to be less accurate, many of resultant DNA copies would not be able to work with the cellular apparatus and would die. So how can the process of making variants be speeded up? Each new variation is made in a DNA copy that already has variations accumulated from previous generations. Thus, two different individuals in a population would have quite different patterns of accumulated variations. Since all of these variations are in living individuals, it is assured that they do not have any real bad effects. Combining variations from two or more individuals would thus create a new combination of variants. Each combination would be novel since it would involve two different individuals. The sexual mode of reproduction incorporates such a process of combining DNA from two different individuals during reproduction. But this creates a major difficulty. If each new generation is to be combination of the DNA copies from two pre-existing individuals, then each new generation will end up having twice the amount of DNA that the previous generation had. This is likely to mess up the control of the cellular apparatus by the DNA. We have seen earlier that as organisms become more complex, the specialization of tissues increases. One solution that many multicellular organisms have found for the problem mentioned above is to have special lineages of cells in a specialized organ in which only half the number of chromosomes and half the amount of DNA as compared to the non-reproductive body cells. This is achieved by a process of cell division. This is called meiosis. Thus, when these germ cells from two individuals combine during sexual reproduction to form a new individual, it results in 
re-establishment of the number of chromosomes and the DNA content in the new generation. If the zygote is to grow and develop into an organism which has highly specialized tissues and organs, then it has to have sufficient stores of energy for doing this. In very simple organism, it is seen that two germ cells are not very different from one another or may even be similar. But as the body designs become more complex, the germ cells also specialize. One germ cell is large and contains the food stores while the other is smaller and likely to be motile. Conventionally, the motile germ cell is called the male gamete and the germ cell containing the stored food is called the female gamete. We shall see in the next few sections how the need to create these two different types of gamete give rise to differences in the male and female reproductive organs and in some cases differences in the bodies of male and female organisms. Now let's discuss the process for sexual reproduction and first we will describe the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The flowering plants also known as angiosperms have both the male and the female reproductive organs. The reproductive parts of angiosperms are located in the flower. Can you do a simple activity? Study the different parts of a flower in your garden and list them. The parts of flower are sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. Sepals are green structures and protect the inner parts when the flower is in bud stage. Petals are colorful and attract the insects for pollination. Stamens are male reproductive parts and produce pollen grains that contain male gametes. Each stamen has two parts. First is filament that is stalk and anther that is the swollen top part which has a large amount of pollen grains which are yellowish in color. You must have seen this yellowish powder that often sticks to our hands if we touch the stamen of a flower. Pistil is present in the center of a flower and is the female reproductive part. It is made up of three parts. The swollen bottom part is the ovary, middle elongated part is the style and the terminal part which may be sticky is the stigma. The ovary contains ovules and each ovule has an egg cell. Flowers in some plants are unisexual means the flower contains either stamens or pistil. For example, the flowers in papaya, watermelon etc. or they may be bisexual when the flower contains both stamens and pistil. For example, hibiscus, mustard etc. The pollen needs to be transferred from the stamen to the stigma. The transfer of pollens may be done with the help of some external agents like wind, water and even animals. Have you seen the butterflies on flowers? These butterflies are one of the best agents to transfer the pollen from one flower to another. If this transfer of pollen occurs in the same flower, it is referred to as self-pollination. On the other hand, if pollen is transferred from one flower to another, it is known as cross-pollination. After the pollen lands on a suitable stigma, it has to reach the female germ cells which are in the ovary. For this, a tube grows out of a pollen grain and travels through the style to reach the female gamete present in the ovule of the ovary. The two gametes fuse together. This process is known as fertilization. A zygote is formed which gets converted into an embryo. These give rise to a new seed which gradually turns into a fruit. After the fertilization, the ovary grows into a fruit and the ovule develops into the seed. The outer part of the flower that is the petals, sepals and stamen become dry and fall off. 
stigma in style also fall off leaving the ovary on the receptacle the zygote inside the ovary gets its food from the ovule and grows by cell division to form an embryo parts of the ovule develop into a seed covering or seed coat the fruits are the ripened ovary of a flower which protects the seed some fruits are fleshy and juicy for example mango apple orange while some are hard like almonds and walnuts now can you do an activity at home take some gram seeds commonly known as chana soak them in water overnight drain the excess water and cover the seeds with a wet cloth and leave them for a day make sure that the seeds do not become dry now cut open the seeds carefully and observe the different parts compare your observation with this figure and see if you can identify all the parts you will see cotyledon that is known as store food plumule that is the future shoot and radical that is the future root now let's discuss reproduction in human beings okay tell me have you noticed changes in your body over the years like increase in height replacement of milk teeth with a new one all of these changes are general process of growth in which the body becomes larger but in early teenage years a whole new set of changes occurs that cannot be explained simply as body enlargement instead the appearance of body changes some new features appear with new sensations some of these changes are different in boys and girls and some are common to both like appearance of hairs on different parts of the body louder voices the skin frequently becomes oily and we might begin to develop pimples we begin to be conscious and aware of both our own bodies and those of others in new ways all of these changes takes place slowly over a period of months and years they do not happen all at the same time in one person nor do they happen at an exact age in some people they happen early and quickly while in others they can happen slowly also each change does not become complete quickly either so for example thick hairs on the face in boys appear as a few scattered hairs first and only slowly does the growth begin to become uniform even so all these changes show differences between people just we have differently shaped noses fingers so also we have different patterns of hair growth all of these changes are aspects of sexual maturation of the body but why does the body show sexual maturation at this age you know that we have talked about the need for specialized cell types in multicellular organisms like humans to carry specialized functions the creation of germ cell to participate in sexual reproduction is another specialized function and we have seen that plants develop special cell and tissue types to create them human beings also develop special tissues for this purpose however while the body of individual organism is growing to its adult size the resources of the body are mainly directed at achieving its growth while that is happening the maturation of the reproductive tissue is not likely to be major priority thus as the rate of general body growth begins to slow down the reproductive tissues begin to mature this period during adolescence is called puberty so puberty is the process of physical changes through which a child's body matures into an adult body that is capable of sexual reproduction now let's discuss the male and female reproductive parts in humans so first we will describe the male reproductive system 
the male reproductive system consists of portions which produce the germ cells and other portions that deliver the germ cells to the site of fertilization. The male reproductive system consists of testes, vas deferens, accessory glands and the penis. Testicles that are also known as testes. These are a pair of oval shaped organs masked in a pouch called the scrotum. They are responsible for the production of sperms and the male hormone that is known as testosterone. Next part is the scrotum. It is also a sac like organ that hangs below the penis and behind it. It is the house of the testicles or testes and maintains temperature that is required for the production of sperm by them. Next organ is vas deferens. The sperms produced in testes are stored in a tube that is known as the epididymis. Here the sperms get matured and pass to urethra through the muscular tube that is known as the vas deferens. Next organ is accessory glands. These include three glands that are known as seminal vesicles, prostrate gland and corpus gland. The secretions from the three glands mixed to form a fluid that is known as semen. The semen nourishes the sperm, increases the volume and helps in lubrication. Next organ is penis. The penis is a cylindrical tube which serves as a reproductive organ and an excretory organ. It delivers sperm into the vagina during sexual intercourse. The sperms formed are delivered through the vas deferens which unites with the tube coming from the urinary bladder. The urethra this forms a common passage for both the sperms and the urine. Along the path of the vas deferens glands like prostrate and seminal vesicles add their secretions so that the sperms are now in a fluid which makes their transport easier and this fluid also provides nutrition. The sperms are tiny bodies that consist of mainly genetic material and a long tail that helps them to move toward the female germ cells. Now let's discuss the female reproductive system. Female reproductive system consists of pair of ovaries, fallopian tubes, they are also known as oviducts, uterus and vagina. The female germ cells or eggs are made in ovaries. They are also responsible for the production of some hormones. You know, when a girl is born, her ovaries already contain thousands of immature eggs. On reaching the puberty, some of these start maturing. One egg is produced every month by one of the ovaries. The egg is carried from the ovaries to the womb through a thin oviduct or a fallopian tube. The two oviducts unite into an elastic bag like structure that is known as uterus. The uterus opens into the vagina through the cervix. The sperms enter through the vaginal passage during sexual intercourse. They travel upwards and reach the oviduct where they may encounter the egg. The fertilized egg that is known as the zygote starts dividing and forms a ball of cells or embryos. The embryo is implanted in the lining of the uterus where they continue to grow and develop organs to become fetus. The embryo gets nutrition from the mother's blood with the help of a special tissue that is called placenta. This is a disc which is embedded in the uterine wall. It contains villi on the embryo side of the tissue. On the mother's side are blood spaces which surround the villi. This provides a large surface area for glucose and oxygen to pass from mother to embryo. The developing embryo will also generate waste substances which can be removed by transferring them into the mother's blood through the placenta. 
the development of the child inside the mother's body takes approximately 9 months the child is born as a result of rhythmic contractions of the muscles in the uterus you know what happens when egg is not fertilized if the egg is not fertilized it lives for about one day since the ovary releases one egg every month the uterus also prepares itself every month to receive a fertilized egg thus its lining becomes thick and spongy this would be required for nourishing the embryo if fertilization had taken place now however this lining is not needed any longer so the lining slowly breaks and comes out through the vagina as a blood and mucus this cycle takes place roughly every month and is known as menstruation it usually lasts for about 28 days as we have seen the process of sexual maturation is gradual and takes place while general body growth is still going on therefore some degree of sexual maturation does not necessarily mean that the body or the mind is ready for sexual acts or for having and bringing up the children in your previous class you must have studied about the possible health consequences of having sex and some of the diseases that can be transmitted from person to person in a variety of ways these include bacterial infections such as gonorrhea and syphilis and viral infections such as warts hiv aids is it possible to prevent the transmission of such diseases during the sexual act these can be avoided using a covering that is known as condom for the penis during the sex helps to prevent transmission of many of these infections to some extent the sexual act always has the potential that led to pregnancy the pregnancy will make major demands on the body and the mind of the woman and if she is not ready for it her health will be adversely affected therefore many ways have been devised to avoid pregnancy these contraceptive methods fall in a number of categories that you will study in detail in next classes so my dear learners hope you will understand the process of sexual reproduction in plants and animals and use this knowledge to answer these following questions first question is how is the process of pollination different from fertilization next question is what is the role of seminal vesicles and prostate gland i hope you will be able to answer these questions you can also discuss the same with your teachers thank you so much